Welcome to the Marinef Breakwater Block results video. My name is Jess Bone and I'm a research assistant for the Marinef project. This video is going to give you an overview of the main results from the Breakwater Block's deployment and the conclusions made. Classic and eco-engineering breakwater modules were produced in the Marinef project and were immersed in two sites in the English Channel, in Cherbourg and in the Bay of Seine. The design allows these new infrastructures to provide a benefit as artificial reef habitats. The increased complexity of the habitats allows for more diversity and hopefully more production. The objective was to compare the two types of breakwater modules by comparing colonisation by primary producers and primary productivity and colonisation by fauna and by comparing the colonisation of artificial and natural substrates in the harbour. In order to characterise the site before module deployment and to monitor the breakwater modules following deployment, the team at the University of Khan achieved 287 dives on the modules. Here we will present work done to monitor colonisation by primary producers and to assess primary productivity. Monitoring of primary producers was carried out. We monitored biodiversity, abundance and biomass of macroalgae and microalgae, microphytobenthos and biofilm, by counting, photographing and scraping samples. Primary production was monitored by photosynthetic measurements. We used a benthic chamber and a PAM, which stands for Pulse Amplitude Modulated Fluorescence, fluorometer and a lab staff. This diagram shows the different approaches we used on the different primary producer compartments. We will only present here the results from the benthic chambers. Automated benthic chamber for primary production measurements was developed during the Marinef project. The benthic chambers were installed on the breakwater modules by diving. The chambers generate increasing light intensities for two hours and the variations in oxygen and CO2 concentrations were monitored. An underwater vacuum or airlift was used to collect scraped samples into a net for later analysis. Here we can see the variation of the oxygen concentration with increasing light intensity. There is a dark period at the beginning and end of the measurement to es estimate respiration. The total incubation time is about two and a half hours. The same thing occurs but for CO2 concentration. It decreases with increasing photosynthetic activity. These are examples of results obtained with benthic chamber incubations. Oxygen production curves can be constructed as a function of light, which then allows us to estimate primary production on a daily scale. These are just some of the species that can be observed on the breakwater modules after two years of monitoring. After initial colonisation by opportunistic green and red algae, we have observed the installation of brown algae. Brown algae are in the majority of the eco-designed modules. On the classic modules, there are both brown and red algae. On both types of modules, we observed a massive reduction of opportunistic green algae after one year. The brown algae biomass consists mainly of Laminaria ocreloca, which is a large brown kelp. It grows four times more on the eco-designed breakwater blocks than on the conventional classic breakwater blocks. In addition to the large biomass that this species represents, it is an indigenous species that allows a complex ecosystem to develop around it. Benthic chamber measurements allowed us to estimate photosynthetic and respiration parameters at different seasons. Using these measurements, we were able to estimate the production per month over the two years of monitoring. The eco-designed breakwater blocks are about twice as productive as the classic breakwater blocks. This result is very impressive and is due to the high colonisation of brown kelp. To determine the faunal colonisation, biodiversity was measured on the top side and vertical surfaces of the breakwater blocks. For faunal colonisation on the top side surface, there are no major differences between the eco-engineered breakwater blocks and the classic breakwater blocks if the holes and crevices are not considered. 
There are also no major differences between the two types of breakwater blocks on the vertical surfaces, but the diversity in the different holes and gutters is very different on the eco-engineered modules. We carried out a study to compare artificial and natural substrates in the Cherbourg Harbour. Several ecological indicators have been tested. We are currently testing the indicators proposed by Bastian Tormina et al. in 2022. The results are currently being processed at the time of writing. Indicators should be developed for artificial structures and in particular for the evaluation of the first stages of colonisation in order to rapidly assess the effects of structures on the environment. The conclusions and applications at this stage of our study show that eco-engineered breakwater blocks appeared more productive than classic breakwater blocks. Laminaria ocraloca, an ecosystem engineer species, is highly favoured on the eco-engineered breakwater blocks, which is an important outcome of the project. The monitoring will allow researchers to increase the replication of these experiments and to confirm or not this trajectory for a longer period. The primary production estimations will be used in an ecological model and the Marinoff project will provide guidelines and protocols to assess primary production in artificial structures and to produce indicators of this main ecological function. With thanks given to the diving team at the University of Caen, Normandy. Thanks for watching. There are more videos in the Breakwater Block series which are listed on screen. Be sure to also visit our social media and the Marinoff Project website for more resources.